Welcome to this month's edition of Hazmat IQ Chemical of the Month. We're going to need our charts and our books, so make sure you have those ready for, the, for this exercise. My name is Joe Gorman, and I'm from Hazmat IQ, and this month's chemical is called methylamine. Okay, so if you remember how the system works, it's a four-step system. So everyone go to chart number five. Let's start there, do a quick review of the system. Okay, so we'll start with step number one. Remember, step number one is a size up. Step number one says this, is my chemical above the line or below the line based on what part of its name? Right, the first name. So, I'll, so we'll always go start with above the line, below the line. And then if you notice in the bottom of that box, it says continue on chart three or chart four. So we'll go to three or four and that completes step one, which is our size up. Once we complete step one size up, we're going to go to step two, which is the NIOSH. NIOSH verifies our initial size up. And from that information gathered, we'll know PPE and we'll know meters to carry when we go down range to operate safely. Okay, so let's start with methylamine. All right, so we're going to go to, to chart number two. Chart number two, we always start with the alphabetical. And we say, we look down to the M's, is methyl there? No, no methyl. That takes you to the above the line size up. What's the above the line size up? Size up again is a prediction. It's not a fact, it's a prediction. So I'm predicting that methylamine is a gas. That gas vapors are heavier than air. That gas has an LEL, a UEL, a flash point, which makes it flammable. That gas polymerizes. It has an ionizing potential. Remember, at this point, I don't know what the IP is. I'll have to find that out in the book. So it has an IP, I just don't know what it is at this point. The next thing I want to know, is this chemical corrosive? Is it an acid? Is it a base? Well, we always start above the line that it's an acid with fluorine. Next thing I want to know, is this chemical toxic, radioactive? So I look up in the IDLH, I'll say it's toxic, yes, but it's toxic in parts per million. It's radioactive until proven different, and it also reacts with water and air. Very important to know if chemicals react with water or air because they can change personalities. They can go from flammable to not flammable. They can produce another gas. A liquid could produce a gas. A solid could produce a gas. So just make sure you look at that to make sure that you have a water reactive or non-water reactives. That's our size up, step number one. Next, if you look at the bottom of this now, it says continue on chart number three. So we go to chart number three and we look up in the flammable clue box. And remember, break the name down by syllables. Methamine, methylamine. Is methyl up there? Yes. So as soon as I get a yes, I go down. What's remaining? Amine, amine, A-M-I-N-E. So I go down and I find it. It's a red eight. The beauty of it knowing that it's a red eight, you can announce it to your team. Team, we're responding to a red eight. And as soon as they know it's a red eight, we know the hazards. It's flammable, it's toxic, it's corrosive. Then we go from left to right and we look at meters. We look at the pH, notice. We sized up that this one was a, was a gas that was an acid. No, man, look, it pH is blue. So it's not a gas that's an acid, it's a gas that's a base. No big deal. Then we say, hey, it's flammable. So if you look across here, you look at the CGI or the LEL meter, that's our flammable meter. So we're gonna give you an X there to measure flammability. It's toxic, so we go over to the green background meters. And that tells us if, if, if the PID will work, if the FID will work, if Drager makes a tube for it. And if, look, all the way to the right, is it a peroxide or is it an oxidizer? Then once we pass the meter columns, we look over in PPE. And this one's a tough one because, look, I, I want to wear turnout gear because I'm a firefighter because it's flammable. But it's a corrosive gas, too, and I know that flammability and corrosivity when I'm wearing turnout gear, I can do the flammability, but the corrosive, I can get around my mask, my hood, it can burn. I can get in my sleeve. I can get it through my turnout gear. So I got to do something. I'm already thinking I'm going to have to do something to make this environment safe because I don't have PPE to protect me from both. Okay, that's step one. Now we go to step two. Open up your book to methylamine. From methylamine, again, we sized it up. Now we need to verify it. So the first thing we do is we look in the physical description box. We said it was a gas. 
What's the word we're looking for? Gas. Is gas there? Yes, it says it's a gas. Next, heavier or lighter than air. To the chemical physical properties box, look for molecular weight. The molecular weight is 31. Air is 29. Slightly heavier than air, so the gas is going down. Next, flammability. I look at LEL, I look at UEL, I look at flashpoint, and I look for carbon and hydrogen in the formula. So let's start with the, with the LEL and the UEL. It's got an LEL of 4.9, it's got a UEL of 20.7. So it is a flammable gas. So if, you, if, you look at, if you look at flashpoint, it says NA gas. And then it'll say it has a uh, fl flashpoint when it's in the liquid state, and the flashpoint is 14 degrees. So that you, if you look at the boiling point, the boiling point's 20. So any time less than 20 degrees temperature, it'll be a liquid. So it becomes flammable any time the liquid's above 14 degrees. Next thing we do is we look at the ionizing potential. We look at the ionizing potential. It's 8.97, which is less than our lamp, which is 10.6, meaning the PID will work. Next, does the FID work? So I go up here to the chemical, to the formula, and I look for carbon and hydrogen. Yes, it has carbon and hydrogen. So the FID will work. I, find, I look to see if it polymerizes. Look at the formula, look at the DOT for a P, and go down here to incompatibilities and reactivities and look for the word polymerize. Does not polymerize? Good news. Next, where does it say it's corrosive here? If you look, I don't, I don't see it anywhere. It says corrosive to copper and zinc and aluminum and galvanized surface, but our charts told us that this is a corrosive base. So remember, it's an acid, um, excuse me, it's a gas that's a corrosive base, so we need to put our pH paper up on our mask for a heads-up display. So it is corrosive. We look in the formula for fluorine. Is there an F up there? No, no fluorine. Next, is this chemical toxic? Back up to the IDLH. It's got 100 part per million toxicity. Remember what IDLH stands for. I stands for inhalation. We must wear respiratory protection so we don't breathe in that corrosive gas. Next, is it radioactive? Up to the DOT box. Remember, 161 through 166 is my radioactive clues. It is not a 161 through 166, not radioactive. So one thing I'm going to do on this one, since I know this is a corrosive gas, and I know that it's flammable, I know I need to change the environment. So whenever I look at a corrosive gas that's flammable, the first place I look is I look for solubility. And I want to see if this gas is soluble so I can use water to take the gas and knock that gas down and make it into a solution. So if you look at solubility, if it's greater than 10% soluble, we can use a fog stream to knock this down and make it into a solution. Well, if you look here, solubility, it says soluble. Soluble is more than 6%, more than 10%, so I'll use a fog nozzle. I'll use my fog nozzle to hit all those molecules of methylamine vapors and knock it down into a solution. How will I know it works? My meters. What meter will hit first? pH paper. So if I'm in turnout gear, if I'm in turnout gear, that pH paper changes blue, I need to back out. If I'm in level A because of the corrosive gas hazard, if my LEL sensor goes to 1%, it's time to back out. So I'm going to change the environment, I'm going to assure our safety, and I'm always going to remember, if I'm not safe in my PPE, it's time to back out. Okay, so that's this month's edition of the Chemical of the Month from Hazmat IQ. I'm Joe Gorman. Have a great day. Peace out.